dear viewers welcome to the uncle k live dot tv you must have seen some of my videos and we were trying to start because it was a soft launching of my tv but today you know when you want something and you will this will be the main theme of the show which we are going to do today that you whatever you want you perceive you decide you are given that thing so today i it was my desire to have somebody a well known lady who already is on the tv channels online and so many events she's attended with her experience her coming here today would be a boost to my channel and her name is miss sandra saxena so miss sandra saxena she has graced the occasion and i think she it was more generous of her to give me her valuable time so that my channel can also be viewed by people who have something interesting to learn from this channel Miss Sandra Saxena. Thank you, Guru Shree. That was absolutely a wonderful introduction, and I must say I am in gratitude to you for having me on your channel. And if you don't mind, can you call me Sandy instead of Sandra because I do prefer Sandy. I will do that. Okay. I will do that. That's very gracious of you. All right. Okay. And so, what do you have for me in store today? Uh, I am, to be honest, I am a little bit nervous. What questions to ask a lady who has answered? says for me nearly everything in the world not because of the circumstances she you are a lady sandy who creates your own circumstances oh yes that's absolutely true so would you like to start from the beginning how you got was it from your genes how did you start getting this imp, you know this uh, confidence and the power which you have to open the way for you Well actually Kashid I have to say um, this is a feeling I have for a very long time that I was born perhaps so what you'd like to call maybe the lucky stars or whatever you want to call it but growing up as a child I was very much loved by my parents by my grandparents by the family and uh, although I have siblings my position as the eldest as what I like to call myself the number one never went away so I grew up in that very loved and cherished atmosphere and as I grew uh, my father and mother played did an important positive role for me in the sense my father always gave me responsibility even when i was just 8 or 9 years old it was my responsibility to lock the front door it was my responsibility to turn the lights off he gave me small things and he made me feel important it is something which grew with me and on the other hand my mother no matter how young i was she never gave order she never said because i am your mother you must obey me it was always something to be discussed always an explanation why she would like me to do something she was a very logical sort of person is that yes what not really logical i'd say more yeah. understanding more it was about being a team of mom and daughter even although i was so young she still gave me that position so i think i'm very grateful to her that even today i have been able to do that with my daughter so it, it it's a cycle absolutely right? so you see absolutely. the positive vibes continue with positive vibes correct that's why sometimes it puts me maybe i am mistaken may because I, i have never seen a human being having just positive vibes there are negative vibes also how do you control them Hmm, yeah. a good question. Uh, you see, uh, I would say, you know, uh, life is a great teacher. And sometimes when people ask me, you know, what's your qualification? What qualifications you have? And I'll say, you know, I have an MBA. And they'll say, an MBA in what? And I say in life. That's right. That's Because, you know, life experiences teach you, but more important is how do you respond not react respond to those experiences whether they are positive or negative because out there there are all kinds of things happening but how is it that you are going to respond to a challenge how is it that you're going to respond for example to a failure uh, to a disappointment because that's life 
and it's not always going to be the way you want it. It's not always going to be everything falling the way you want it to do. So how is it that you deal? And I have found that by getting stressed out or getting unhappy or getting angry, you can't solve the problem. It's still going to be there. So how is it that you are going to adjust yourself in order to face that? You can only, you only have control on yourself, right? You don't have control on anybody else, your boss or your parents or your spouse or your children. It's only yourself. So this is what I've learned for a long time. And I just want to add one thing over here. You know, we tend to get, lose our cool. We tend to get angry. And it's one of the worst possible things you can do to your body to be angry. And this I just discovered uh, a couple of years ago when I had uh, the opportunity of going for a reading to a general, uh, he's a doctor actually, and uh, he's a naturopath. So he, he looks sorry, at... Sorry, sorry if I interrupt you, this is something new for me. What is a naturopath? All right, naturopath is a yeah. person who looks at all the, uh, the, the chemical readings in your body and uh, then he will suggest supplements instead of medication for you to bring down your cholesterol, for you to bring down your stress, stuff like that. So they have to do all these tests? No, actually there's no test required as in a blood test. It's more about the readings of your different levels and enzymes in the body. So when I went, I was quite uh, intrigued by all this. So while he was talking to me, he sort of hooked me up with these electrodes and all that to this uh, computer which had this special software. So by the time he finished asking me about myself, and all when he um, did all that and then he said to me you know Sandy you're very angry and I looked at him and said no I'm not I'm, I, you know I'm, I'm absolutely fine I'm not angry he said I didn't say you were angry now you must have had some kind of anger situation earlier in the day I said what do you mean how do you know he said, were you angry before? I said, yeah, around 8, 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock, there was something that, that got me upset and angry. He says, believe it or not, that anger is still reflecting in your different enzyme levels in your body. Whoa. And he says, this is the thing what that... what was the time at the, of this interview? At 4 o'clock in the afternoon. So from 8 to 4? Yes, that, thing that was, still, was still in the body. It was still making me... F uh, although mentally it was gone, but the physical reaction was still there. And then he said, you see what happens when you have negative emotions, how it affects every organ of your body. And that really got me thinking that I have one body, like you have one body, right? This is one thing that comes with no spare parts. Correct? Correct. You can't say if my liver is not all right, oh, it doesn't matter, I'll just get another one. Yeah, it doesn't work. <laughs> but that also is not everybody's. Yeah, it's there, not, we, yeah. this is one thing that comes with no spare parts. Okay. Okay. Therefore, it is our responsibility to ourselves to look after the only body we have. And when we do that, everything else becomes fabulous. Everything else just falls into place. You're happy, you're in good health, your energy levels go up. I wonder, with all this busy life you have, have you ever fully given attention to your children, to your marriage? How did you come about that? Okay, that's an interesting question. Yeah. And most people view me as this very professional woman, you know, businesswoman out there doing so many things. But I'd love to share a secret. I only stepped into the workforce when I was 44 years old. Yeah, I have, I'm sure my viewers would love to hear that because, <laughs> and, and that was where? In Dubai. In Dubai. And that's where I want them to know that yes. Dubai is not a very bad place. No, actually it's a wonderful place and I am, uh, when I look back in retrospect, when I first arrived here and, uh, and I had to go uh, looking for a job, I thought this was a very inhospitable place. It was, you know, a place that was not welcoming because I, I would go for interviews and nobody would obviously Rejection. listen to me. You know. I've gone through that. Yes, yeah. but yeah. then when, when things started happening for me, I think it's one of the best places to be. The, the, amount of, the amount of opportunities you have here, the amount of opportunities to actually grow and expand and develop yourself, it's amazing. 
and I'm so grateful that I had that particular challenge in my life because unless I'd had that challenge I wouldn't be sitting here today talking to you very much so tell me about your married life how it started and how did you take care of why did you go for a job after 44 well yeah when I got married, uh, you know, the traditional get married right out of the university, uh, my husband's a lawyer and uh, by God's grace he's always done extremely well. So there was no need for me to work. So uh, what uh, part of law is he doing? He does corporate law and corporate finance. Oh, that's very pain. That's very pain. <laughs> well, okay. it was, a, it was a, a, let's say, a challenge for him. He's a young lawyer starting out in Kuwait. He got married in Kuwait actually. I see. Okay. Yes. And then I was blessed with two wonderful children, very healthy and uh, a joy to have and I was fortunate enough not to be worried about going out and working, I could devote my time to my children and I think that is something that most mothers enjoy, at least I do. It was a wonderful time in my life and uh, but again every, t every stage in your life is different and so when that stage of nurturing the children, bringing them up, school etc, all that was over and my son stepped into university, that was a change, it was a transition period in our life. My husband for his career, my son going away to university, so it was a big change for us. When you said change, was it because he was going far away from you, you would be missing him? Or was it, of course it was a change for him because he is going to stand into a responsible Correct. this thing. But what about your feelings at that time? Actually, I was uh, in a way ready for my son to fly from the nest. I had given him the kind of guidance that he could be very much on his own an independent young man going out into something really exciting and a new phase in his life. So I was quite happy for him to go because I knew we have a very strong bond as, as a mother and a son and I would always be there for him and he's always there to come back and ask for my advice or my suggestions etc. So it's a, it's a, it was a very comfortable feeling actually. It was nothing where I felt you know a part of my life is changing and it's traumatic. It was never traumatic. I can agree with you because I knew that you would say that but I had to do it. <laughs> oh no that's absolutely yeah. fine. Now uh, Sandy, uh, God bless you because you and myself of going through a phase which we want the viewers to know that we I have never been to a dentist I have never had any health problems I've never caught cold or flu how did we create that type of body when I say create I'm not saying we are God but God how do you we maintain? maintain that body and you yourself Yane, bless you you look really so energetic and I feel I, energetic. Forget so about looking. The, what is the secret behind that? Well, I think I'm just very happy. And something must be making you happy. <laughs> I have no There's idea. A reason. Oh no, I'm just very happy with life. Now, Sandy, when you let's, I'm still stuck with that uh, family part which you have. Because I cannot portray you as a family person. Oh dear. Oh. <laughs> I'm still wondering how did you go through all that phase, all your deliveries, your children and they were all born in Dubai? No, my son was actually born in India but we were in Kuwait at that time okay. and uh, so obviously he was from the age of one month he's been in Kuwait and my daughter was born in Bahrain. I see, you have been more than... Oh yes, a yes, uh, yes completely Khaliji. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. So it was good and uh, I have to say this that uh, um, I'm going to share a secret with you and it's going to be a public secret because I don't generally talk You're about full it. full of surprises. Oh, I don't know about that. When you hear about it, you can tell me whether it's a surprise or not. But you know, as I've said, I've always been very positive about what I want in life. And uh, I now, of course, we know it's, uh, it's something like the secret, you know, this, this yeah. video that came out and now is the power of attraction. But when I was growing up, these things were not articulated, you know, it was you just were living your life. But I, I was very keen when I got married that I should be a mother. That was something that would have devastated me if I was not a mother. 
So when my noble thought, believe me. So my when my children were born, I was I felt very blessed. Okay. I you know that I had these wonderful, beautiful children. You know, healthy, intelligent, loving, everything that a mother would want in her children. And then many years later, I had a scan done because there was some issue that there was, and it was the first time in my life that I actually had uh, the sophisticated scan done because I didn't need to do it before. And I was very surprised because the technician who was doing the scan asked me, where's your kidney? And I said, excuse me? He said, where's your kidney? I said, well, it must be there. Because as you can see, I have no scars, so obviously I haven't had it removed. He said, madam, you don't have a left kidney. So I thought, ah, he doesn't know he's just a technician. So then I, when I went to see the doctor and the results, and I said, you know, this technician asked me this question and I don't understand this. He says, yes, you don't have a left kidney. He says, and if you'd like to know a little more, we're going, we, I've ordered some further investigation and uh, I'm going to share the results with you later. So when they share the results, it's apparently I don't have a left ovary or a left fallopian tube, which is important for the reproductive system of a lady. And uh, of course, no left kidney. And yet, I had two normal pregnancies and two normal deliveries. You know, and it's not uh, some airy fairy talk. This is uh, this is a live example. You know, of when when you have the power of intention to do anything, to to conquer anything, to achieve anything, that's you can do it. And the proof, uh, if suppose some unsuccessful person says that we say, oh, he's a dreamer and not, but you are a successful person, yes. so you have achieved it. Yes. So you have a right to say that what you do is correct. Yeah. That's the well, right way. You know, Kushid, uh, you've been talking about the power of attraction and or, you know, the positive vibes that you give out, etc. And I'd just like to share with you, when I, when I started this job at 44, uh, I, I was never a working person. So there was I couldn't write a CD. Ah, pure blank. You know, I looked upon it and said, "Is that a blank piece of paper, or does it give me the opportunity to create what I want?" Okay. Exactly. So you to, can be bored into whatever. Yeah. So part. now, now I can write a lot, right? Yeah. Correct. So when, when uh, at that time it was a bit of a challenge when I was looking for something to do, but who's going to recognize my innate ability? when I don't have anything to prove otherwise, okay? But I used to pray every day. That okay, that's very right. Now coming back to your that blank CV. <laughs> who, I would like to meet that person and shake him by the hand that the person who hired you and why didn't they hire you? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think uh, I do owe it a lot to, uh, I'm going to give you my boss's name, he's still my boss. Uh, his name is Mr. Arun Kumar. Okay. And I work with Nexus, we, uh, they're brokers. Consultants. Uh, right. Consultants. Okay. And uh, it has been a wonderful journey of discovery, of development, of creativity, of finding my my niche, if you would like to call it. And I all and I owe it actually to this person, Mr. Kumar. How did you come to know about him? How did you get to get a CV to him? Okay, no, again, it was, you know, if uh, if my blank CV had arrived, he would most probably never have looked at it because there was nothing to say. Yeah. But uh, as I said, the power of intention is very strong. And uh, in those days, there was a, a need for me to go out and, and earn money. Uh, and so, I, as I said, I used to pray. Anytime, anywhere, you know, like God, please do something. Even when I open the newspaper, I just pray and say, "Today, let me see something that is going to make." Which is yes, okay. And I never used to look in the classifieds anymore because I'm not an accountant or a secretary. I don't have computer skills. Blah blah blah. So, but I looked that day. Just. My eyes were guided to look at that. And amazingly enough, it was in this bold uh, boundary. And it said, if you think you're a people's person and you have good communication skills, no experience required, training provided. I said, oh my god, I mean, 
has he answered my prayers or what? Oh, no, that's very beautiful, important. Uh, uh, Sandra, whatever, I'm sorry, Sandy, whenever there is an opportunity, don't forget that. Make me meet your boss. Oh, absolutely. I would love, love you to meet him because I think he has, uh, I went for that particular seminar. It was a recruitment seminar. And uh, uh, at the end of the seminar, I was asked to stay back. And of course, then it's a long story. But it's a 17-year-old story. But uh, what my, uh, what we can call him the, my boss, or the person who helped me develop myself, is he was always very flexible in his approach. And he understood stood me very well, which was important. So he nurtured my strengths, which is something very important. He nurtured those strengths and made me more confident. Which you even you were not aware yes, of. Yes, absolutely. Right. Absolutely. And I think uh, I wouldn't say that I stumbled into this job. I would say that I was intended to be in this job because my job is all about financial independence for people. That brings me back to that question now. So having said what you have done, that introduces your career start and all. Now, what profession you are following now, what does that do to help people? It actually does a lot to help people because whenever I meet a, a, a prospect or anybody, even in a in social conversation, you know, if I mean just clarify one thing. When you say prospect and all, there was oh, it's insurance. You are just selling insurance. So what? No, it's not insurance. Let let her finish, and you will be <laughs> really amazed at it, at it, how it's helping the people and. Of course, she has to earn a living also, the company. Well, isn't that a wonderful thing where yeah. you can actually can help some also. and also earn money? Exactly. exactly. Yeah, it's a and wonderful... You lose your hobby to yes. make money. Yes. Yes. See, as I said uh, before, uh, when people talked about, you know, what is your experience, what are your qualifications, and I said, you know, I have an MBA in life. Now, I have... I'm sorry, I use it in another way. When okay. Somebody asked me what are my call, and to be honest with you, I'll also share a secret. I've only passed seventh grade. Oh wow, it's so amazing! To, and my eyes, you know, they told me I was going to go blind. They put me in a music school because I would not be able to earn anything hmm. at the age of seven. Oh my God! Then that feeling, at that prayer, that and from that time, my eyes at seventh age, my eyes were minus ten legally blind and from that age up to now it stood just stood there when you know when you pray it lives. yes it, it's, it's the positive energies will will help you that, that is a purpose that shows that there is a purpose for yes us. maybe we are going to be used for something yes you understand that thing so coming back to what we were saying sorry i've lost no no that's that. perfect that, that we were talking about okay. financial planning and the importance of uh, what i do exactly exactly so when you said about the life thing what i say is when they ask me what is your what are your qualifications i say i'm from the University of HK. So they said, what, which university is that? I said, that's Hard Knocks. <laughs> I've learned from Hard Knocks. I've fallen down so many times that it, now I don't even feel that I'm... You know, but you, what did they say about success? It is getting up one more time. Exactly. You should... And then, then they said, always uh, fall on your back so that you get up easily. <laughs> don't fall on your back. No, and I have to say this about success. Yeah. There's no place to lie down. Every, because if you lie down, somebody else is going to stand up and take over. Or maybe walk over. Yes. You know, maybe. Yeah, yeah. So, the, no, no, that's perfectly so the, all right. How will you, would you guide these people? Well, actually, yeah. I will say this. Life is all about choices, right? It's a choice, what you want to do, who you marry, whether you, you, are, you are doing something in your life because you want to do it or not. It's always a choice. So when anybody who has come here, for example, in Dubai, left their homes, home country, and they've come here to make a living, all of us over here are expatriates, right? We chose to come here. Right? And we chose to be in a particular job, in a particular social circle. Everything is a choice. I am talking about planning to ensure that the choices that you make, you are happy with them. So money plays an important role. Correct? If you want to have a good life, if you want to be successful, if you want to enjoy yourself, you need money. 
think? How much money is another matter, but you do need the money, right? So I say two things is one is you're earning your money, so you're working for your money. My job is now let your money work for you. Okay. That's very nice. So you have savings, for example. But we also now know that the cost of living is going up. So if you have savings and your saving is, you have, for example, a thousand dirhams. So today you can buy X amount of things than one thousand dirhams, right? Two years from now, do you think that one thousand dirhams is going to be paying for all the things that you bought? Or will it be less? Is right. Precisely. Okay. Yes. So I always say this. Uh, thank you for using the word inflation yeah. because I call it the silent thief. It That's is so always there. In some cases, Sandra, you don't know that it could be a silent killer also. Yes. Because you hear the cases. Yes. Yeah. So it's the silent thief. It is yeah. always present. Always present. It never goes away. Correct. Right. And so you've got to make sure that you're aware of this. And that is why when people say, oh, I'll continue to earn money, fine. One fine day you may not be able to earn money or you may not be able to earn enough to keep up with the cost of living. So do you think it would be a good idea where I have to suddenly start bringing my standard of living down because the cost of living is not allowing me to stay at that? Or do you think it would be more logical if I did something with my money which I should be saving, so it grows faster than inflation. Not only for inflation, Sandra, you just put me in one thing, because I faced that thing when my children were growing up. We think that there's this KG nursery, okay, it's not that very costly, we are still saving a little bit. But when the children start growing and the expenses start growing, their college education, their... Absolutely. You, then you wonder why didn't you plan for it yes. in the beginning. Yes, yes. And, and when I meet people, I always say to them, I said, you know, I, it's not like I'm there trying to push you to, to buy a plan from yourself. Something. Let's look at it logically. You have a child today. Okay, that child is going to go to, as you said, nursery or school. How expensive do you think it's going to be? Do you have any idea what the cost is? Exactly. And, it's and then every time. Every time. Yeah. Not only education. Everything else is rising. So it's up to us as parents to be able to give our children a good opportunity in life by providing them with a good quality education. That's the least we can do for them. We brought them into this world. Exactly. Correct? It's none of their fault. Yes, so now we should be able to provide for them. Yeah. That is our responsibility as parents. But more important, it is a responsibility to us, to each individual. And that's what financial planning is all about. When you take responsibility for yourself, for your welfare and the welfare of your family, and this is not a responsibility of one person. This is a responsibility of the team, the husband and wife team, if you're married. Okay? So you cannot say because I, for example, the lady is not a working person, that, okay, I have nothing to do with the money, so I don't need to do anything. Just give me my uh, the expenses to run the month, and I'll run it, and that's it. I'm oblivious of what else is happening. And that is being irresponsible. And I'm saying this. No, Sandra, no, 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 no. They are not being irresponsible. Even these irresponsible to whom we call irresponsible, after two, three months start griping to the husband that the money is not enough. Yes. I'm not being able to meet my expenses. So they are wondering why this money is becoming like this. So don't you think it would be a good idea if they were a little more aware of what's happening around exactly, them? Exactly, exactly. How can you relieve all the responsibilities to your, on the shoulders of one person. It's not fair. That person also is a human being. That person doesn't have a super uh, human memory, superhuman capabilities, etc. So you have to be a team. You must share in record keeping, in taking care of bills. So is it your, uh, just because you're a housewife, how difficult is it for you to go and pay the electricity bill? How difficult is it for you to go and pay the, the telephone bill? You can do it in a shopping mall. Exactly. My wife does that. But uh, there's another thing, uh, Sandra, because we are, you know, these are close to my heart, what you are saying. And I'm sure there are people, or maybe majority of them, in this, when I say age group, when they have 
grown up children and all they are facing the same things so these wives not only that there is a saying in our country that uh, if even if a big billionaire businessman runs short of money or gets near to bankruptcy it's his wife who has done that saving quietly she supports her husband look i have saved this much for you which that the, the husband had was not even aware of or they she runs the house till the husband stands on their feet again so those are people who are saving so saving is a must it's a must but you after you saved and you've done that what do you do with that money you got to make your money grow so you you need to know where you should invest it where it can give you a higher return than the bank because if inflation but is not that fine no no that that's the reason why we are there yes yeah. and i love to do presentations seminars i write a lot of articles on this and i write it in a very straightforward simple manner so that people can actually understand there's no rocket science in this if you can do addition subtraction multiplication and division that's all you need to be good in financial planning Okay, Sandra. With your permission, since people will be curious and they would want to contact you, we won't give your phone number, but can we give your email so they can contact? Yes, I think if you if you just run it down, uh, yeah, you know something. Yes, yes, yes. yes. That's fine. So, no problem. So we'll put um, uh, Sandra's uh, email address there, and she's. I mean, she doesn't mind answering those emails, and uh, it would be my pleasure actually. Yeah. So that that's a social service you are doing. Yes. You know? It's not. Uh, I mean, God has given you enough, and but uh, that is something. Just sometimes you know it's, up, uh, it's blessings. Plenty. When do you say it is enough? I have heard it. There is no question of when is enough because uh, it all depends on what it is you want out of life. No, I'm talking about money, finance. Yes, finances. Okay, yeah. you can you can say I have earned enough. So, or should you, if there's an opportunity to make more, should will you say no? <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> All right, okay. It's if you if you feel that you've done, for example, now we have very wealthy people who said yes, we have everything that money can buy. So now we are going to give this money away so that we can improve the lives of others. We can give them an opportunity for better health, better education, better so many things. So you could do that as well. So, in other words, just earning and saving so much money doesn't give you that full satisfaction. It's what you do Unless with it. Unless you start yes. donating. So, for example, yeah. uh, uh, when I saw my son and my daughter graduate, it was a wonderful feeling in my heart that because of the work we had put in and the discipline we had, we were able to provide them with a good education. And that was a good feeling. Right. Now, there are a lot of my clients. Sometimes I've got a call. In fact, uh, uh, two years ago, I got a call from a client of mine whose son was going to uh, aviation school in the United States, and uh, he called me up. The son spoke to me, and he says, he "Calls me, Auntie." He said, "Auntie, I'd like to thank you very much because all those years ago, when you sat my father down and you explained the importance of planning." to him it is because of that financial planning yeah that i am yeah. today in this school and he can pay the fees i felt so wonderful it was such a great feeling so uh, i think i love my job because when i see the changes that i have been able to bring about in people's lives be it insurance or be it just planning for education or retirement or even starting a business it's a great feeling uh, sandal just to clear the people is still misunderstand when you say insurance it's not just insurance health or medical it's the financial planning which you yes, do yes. investment savings yeah. and yeah because yeah. when when you're looking at a person's life you you got to understand where they stand at that particular time what are their various responsibilities what are their dreams and aspirations where would they like to see themselves in the future you are giving them the bird's eye view yes yeah, and right. and and it's sometimes when you are busy in your work and people are busy in their lives this is not what they are focusing on they've got a couple of dreams here they have a vision board you know i wish i could do this or when the time comes i'd love to do that so when will the time come yeah, it's like being uh, too close to the trees to see the forest yes yes so sandra uh, i think uh, let the audience be a little bit more curious and they may 
demand that you give another interview they may absolutely <laughs> so what they can do is our twitter account our facebook and all you can just write to us so we maybe we can convince sandy to give us another segment of the same interview we'll take over from where we are going to conclude this session thank you very much kushi it was wonderful thank you so much for all those wonderful questions and i'm so i have so many still pending don't worry oh my god you are a book you know once you open you cannot put down okay <laughs> well thank you very much it was wonderful being on the show and uh, i hope i've been able to give some good positive pointers to all of you yeah thank you okay.